Jonathan Monaghan, it's very good to have you with us today. Now, um, here in this exhibition called uh, Opulence, you liken the glamour of the Baroque era to our times, the aesthetic uh, of the times that we live in. But then the general understanding of Baroque is that it's dramatic, it's exaggerated, and sometimes even bizarre. I feel like today, the aesthetic we see around is a little more varied than that. Even looking at your exhibition, you are inspired by science fiction to classicism, etc. So tell us, in that sense, how did you come to this point where you're you know, comparing the both? Yeah, I think our aesthetics are very different in today's age, but if you look at uh, the obsession that we have with material items and the obsession we have with wealth and power and a lot of the other aspects about our digital age, uh, I think we can draw a lot of comparisons to the Baroque times. And so in my work, I will often take the Baroque aesthetics and then reinterpret them and update them for the digital age. So what you liken between the two eras is not the aesthetic then, but then the system, the Baroque aesthetic is like the system today, yes. is what you're saying. Yeah, I think so. So I'm, I think I'm drawing back to the, those aesthetics of opulence and decadence and uh, really overwhelming power, you know, and that's what Baroque architecture was all about. It was meant to overwhelm the viewer. And I think our culture operates in a very similar way when we talk about our consumer culture and our commercial culture is very overwhelming. And so I think I try and draw those comparisons. Okay. Well, obviously, Baroque era came after Renaissance and uh, you know uh, mannerism, where artistic rules were broken. Um, so, in that sense, it's almost served the purpose of you know shocking the audience and sometimes even um, perhaps um, you know helping the church. I guess I don't want to dig deeper into the topic, of course. But in that sense, what do you think this um, overwhelming shock is serving? in our times today? Well, I think our, with our relationship to technology, technology moves so fast and um, technology can be very overwhelming and overpowering uh, for us. And so with my work, I try to offer an opportunity for my audience to reflect on our relationship to technology. And hopefully through that, my audience can gain some insights and some critical insights into our relationship with technology. So what I'm trying to ask is actually, we look at, say, your work or uh, the aesthetics around, and then we get shocked by the overwhelming weight of it. Where does this take us to? Well, that's a good question. I'm not sure. You know, and I think as an artist, um, I'm not trying to say anything too specific. I think with my work and in the works you see in this exhibition, uh, it's an opportunity to reflect, and it's an opportunity to have an emotional response to something and everybody is going to get something slightly different from it, uh, but I hope that my audience can gain some new perspectives on our relationship to things like our consumer culture and our relationship to technology. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, when you mentioned the Baroque era, we definitely go back to the artistry, and Baroque era was followed by Rococo, mm -hmm. which was even you know, yes. more uh, pronounced in terms of uh, you know, its uh, glamour, I guess. Do you expect this kind of a pattern to carry on after whatever the era, I mean, whatever you call the era we're in, but? I think there's different ways to look at aesthetics. And I think you can take a look at the social and cultural and the economic aspects of it. And I think you could also look at it um, in what the artists were trying to express and what the artists were trying to achieve, you know? And so uh, I like to do that. And I'm very influenced by these historical artists. And many of the works in the exhibition directly reference a lot of historical artworks in that period. But do you think the overwhelming quality of uh, our day and age, will it be even more pronounced in the future? Um, I think there has to be a, a tipping point or there has to be a limit, right? Because there's so much information that we're exposed to every day. And I think it's very taxing for a lot of people just to operate in the world today with social media and with so much information, so much technology on all the time. And um, I think, I always like to think of my works as like a therapy for this crazy, uncertain time that we're living in, you know, with all this information, with all this extravagance. I like to think of my works as a way in which people can maybe come to grips or reflect on that. And it is very interesting that this kind of um, reflection comes from a digital artist, an early adopter of 
the NFTs, really. So, um, what, is it sort of cathartic for you to um, maybe even criticize uh, the power of uh, the technology and social media and uh, you know the digital revolution, so to say, we're in right now? Yeah, well, I think throughout history, artists have always embraced new technologies. And this is something that I'm very much a, a pro proponent of. And I think we've seen that with like photography and the printing press. You know, these are very powerful technologies, very pa powerful forms of media that have really transformed the world and history. And artists have always been at the forefront of these things. So I think it's very important for artists to be at the forefront of all these new emerging technologies, such as NFTs, um, and also things like social media, um, because having the artist's creative expression in these spaces is going to ensure that you know the human, the the human, the human aspect of these uh, technologies remains. You know. But then, uh, I mean, I'm reading my from my notes here. You tackle subconscious anxieties associated with technology and consumerism, excessive dependence on technology, or even modern captivity of technology. I would imagine, after reading a press release like this, I would imagine that you would have never worked in a digital sphere, you know, where you never used technological tools. In that sense, do you find it to be at odds because you already are, um, you know, recreating this discourse yourself? Well, yeah, I think we have to, um, for me, I like to engage with the media that I'm criticizing, you know, and, and I am critical of technology and our overdependence on technology. Um, but I think it's useful to use technology to make those criticisms um, because it helps, I think, um, you know, technology isn't going away, right? You know, we can't just like give up on technology. It's part of our lives. It's an integral part of uh, the world today and society. And so we can't ignore it. We can't like just say, oh, I'm going to live in the past. Or I'm going to live in a hut, you know? And so we have to find ways in which we can make it work better with us and for us. And I think artists have an opportunity to do that by using these creative technologies to say something. Do you find yourself to be over dependent on technology personally? Yeah, I do. Um, but I think, you know, just like with everybody, you struggle with, um, you know, obsessing over social media or, or being addicted to scrolling through uh, social media. Um, but one thing I do with my work is I try and connect a lot of these ancient crafts, like, for instance, stone carving. Uh, the works behind me are part of a project where I did stone carving in marble. Um, and we were using technology in this process, but at the same time, we're also employing uh, ancient uh, stone carving methods uh, to create artwork. So it's really linking uh, these ancient histories and traditions with a more modern day techno technological um, framework. Mm -hmm. Of course, we tackled the, I mean, we talked about the curatorial concept, but if I could ask you to perhaps briefly summarize uh, what is here in opulence. Um, yeah, so the works in this exhibition represent several years of my artistic practice and they involve a number of computer animated videos and a number of um, wallpaper prints. And the works range uh, from, they go back into 2015 uh, until today, and all of the works connect to this idea of our relationship to technology as I talked about. Uh, many of the works reinterpret ancient myths and stories, uh, such as that of the phoenix or the unicorn. Uh, these are ancient mythological figures and stories uh, that I am updating and reinterpreting for the present day. Mm -hmm. And um, you say that you want to push the viewer's boundaries with this exhibition. Tell us what exactly you want to achieve uh, with this exhibition. I mean, how do you want a viewer to leave this space with? I mean, what kind of thoughts? Well, I employ a lot of the same tools and techniques that are used in commercial forms of media, things like Pixar movies or commercials or video games. And my work maintains a very similar aesthetic to these commercial forms of media. And that gives my audience a entry point into the world because it gives them some familiarity and it makes the works a little bit accessible to everybody. Uh, however, the stories and the narratives are a lot more challenging and experimental and they're a little bit more difficult to understand what's going on. They're not the kind of stories that you encounter in these commercial forms of media. 
And instead, I think they are stories that challenge us to think critically about our relationship to technology, our relationship to our consumer culture, and our relationship to um, just the future and what our anxieties are about the future. So I want people to leave this exhibition with um, their own perspective changed a little bit about who we are and where we're going when it comes to technology. Okay, who we are and where we're going, my last question. Yeah. Um, how do you think we will remember these times when we, I mean, when it has a place in art history, when we look back from 100 years on, this is for future reference. I mean, are, are these transitional times or are these times where transition itself becomes the character of it? That's a really good question. Um, you know, I think, as I said before, I think artists, um, you know, when you look at history, artists have always been at the forefront of new technologies. And I think when we look back at this time, we're going to see just how important artists that are engaged with digital technology, how important their voice is, uh, because it lends a humanity to this digital technology that is so all-encompassing and that we can't escape from, you know? And so I think um, that is what's going to um, be the historical um, takeaway from this era. All right, we'll have to wait and see yes, if we can live not, long though. enough, <laughs> I guess. Thanks so much. It was right. lovely talking Thank to you. Thank you, yes.